Good morning and welcome to another video of there's another tank sort of available even if not yet because you need quite a lot of time to actually get there but here we are and it is the 50 TP now it's a tier 9 Polish heavy basically it will be in the European line because of that and I've actually tried comparing it to uh, to other tier 9 heavies uh, basically but it's it's different, it doesn't really compare yet to, to anything, so I found that it was kind of useless. But I will go over the stats with you and we will have a look at what it's like, how it performs and everything. Now, the games that I have are fairly mediocre. I'm still on holiday, so I haven't been putting a lot of time into actually getting these games. So I mainly just went with the games that I could get that were decent and... It's a fun tank, like it's it's a tricky tank, it's a hull down tank and hull down is generally not the kind of way that I prefer to play so that kind of made for an issue, well issue is not the right word but yeah. As you can see when you fire it definitely packs a wallop and especially when they're not actually turning or paying attention to you at all you can eat away most of the health of the tier 8s that you meet quite uh, quickly. Now, the DPN is 2143, uh, that is sort of on par with some of the other heavies uh, of its tier, like the STI has 2214, but then the KPF has 2087, it's that kind of stuff. It doesn't really compare to the other heavies, but just to give you like an idea. The pendant it has is 246 for AP, uh, the Alpha is 440, it's, it's, it packs a wallop, it's, it's a fun tank that way. The reload is 12.32 seconds, so it's not like super slow, but it's also not very fast. And you have to be a bit patient, and that's where the hold down part comes in quite well, because if you hold down and you get that chance to reload in peace, then you're likely to do just fine. Now, the caliber is 122, the shell velocity is 1007, and the aim time is 2.45, the dispersion is 0 0.344, and the gun depression is 8 degrees, and the gun elevation is 20 degrees. So it, it can work positions just fine. It's it's a heavy, you, you can't expect it to sort of like reach line the same way that mediums uh, can, but at the same time I feel that this tank can work a lot of positions very easily and I quite like it. Now there's of course the speed, it goes 48 kilometers per hour forwards, 15 backwards, the engine power is 825 which is the same as the KPF. Um, the power to weight ratio is 15.94, uh, it's... Um, Basically, terrain resistance one point. It's that's it's sort of like on par with the rest of the tanks. The camo ratings whilst uh, while standing still is twelve percent, while moving is six percent. After shooting, it's two percent or one percent. So that's very low. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's a heavy tank. It's not really supposed to stay hidden all that long. And of course, the view range is. Uh, 264 which is literally the same as the Amiel 2, the KPF and the SA because those are the tanks that I kind of looked at and maybe let's see if it compares but for the rest they don't really and uh, it's got an HP of 2050 but this is all without um, actual uh, equipment and, and stuff so keep that in mind as well. Now the turret armor in the front is 270 and uh, from the side it's 150 and at the rear it's 100, whereas the hull armor is 80 all around. And this is exactly what I mean, it is a hull down tank. I haven't played it hull down, mainly because it doesn't really suit my playstyle much, so I've just been um, playing it the way that I like and just see how it handles that. Now, I'm going to talk about the event of course as well, because that is how you can get this tank. I do feel that with the way that this tank plays, and if you're a bit of a hull down player, then it's definitely worth going for it because it is fairly balanced. It's not OP, but it can, like I said, pack a wallop and it, it's fun to drive. So for the event, you need 1000 ingots, which is basically the in-game stuff that you get for um, for playing the event. And you need 1000 of them and 714 of them can be earned through clan missions. Now, basically, you need a clan that completes all the missions every week and basically fills the bar up completely. And then you get 135 ingots for that. 
and uh, for completing all your clan missions uh, every week you get 103 ingots in total yourself so that leaves the 714 ingots uh, that you can get and that is basically what you need to get in uh, order to get to the 70 percent and after that you can actually gold the tank now golding it completely costs you 4.5k gold um, Probably a little bit less as you get to 714 if you do all your clan missions. But at, anyway, more than 70% completion means you can gold it. And every ingot you need will cost you 15 gold. So it, it's doable to do it for free. But if you want to do it a little bit more easily, you can basically just gold part of it at least. Now, the other way that you can do that if you do not have gold is to earn Brothers in Arms medals. Now, you get a Brothers in Arms medal by tuning with, uh, in this case, a clan mate. It has to be a clan mate, otherwise it doesn't count. And you uh, get two kills, your clan mate gets two kills, and you um, both survive the battle. That is how you get a Brothers in Arms medal, and that will actually let you win. Uh, some time more ingots. Now you have to do these battles in tier 4. You can't probably steal club in the canny for this because basically um, you can get probably easier there. And so tier 4 or higher, it's still possibly to steal club your way there to be fair, but still. Um, to get the uh, the ingots for it, the, the amount that you get differs per server. So you get 45 per medal uh, on Asia server, 45 per medal on NA server, 35 per medal on EU server and 25 per medal on uh, are you server now if you want to uh, completely do this for free and you've done all your clan missions and your clan has got them uh, gotten the bar all the way up uh, every week then you need seven brothers and arms missions uh, medals on asia server seven medals on na nine medals on eu or 12 on are you to get 10 completely free there is of course if you don't want to call it and if you've done all the missions However, if you want to do it completely this way, then you need 23 Brothers in Arms medals on Asia, 23 on NA, 29 on EU or 40 on RU to get the tank completely free still. I'm actually quite like that Wargaming has done it this way, mainly because it's, uh, it's not too difficult. You can do this and you can do it without dieharding too hard. Especially if you want to call the tank a little bit, then it's 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 fairly easy. Like clan missions are relatively easy and fast to to do most of the times. I'm not saying that they all are. Some of them really suck, but overall it, it is doable, and that's something to keep in mind as well. Like I've actually added some helpers to the clan uh, to the clan I'm in and that I lead uh, in order so that we can get then we can help each other. They can help us get the clan missions up because we're not that active a clan uh, in game days and they can get the tank and we can get the tank that way so i'm actually i'm a fan of wargaming doing these kind of events where you also have the option to call like a portion of it but not everything so you do have to play and you do have to do your best and in this case you have to tune with the clan mate which is something that i quite enjoy as well so it's sort of like bringing clans together. I actually thought that it would work very differently, that it would be like a sort of mass grind event where everyone has to play and everything. I'm kind of happy that that is not the case, mainly because of the activity in my clan. And I'm happy to be able to get this tank at least. That being said though, I do feel that the tank is pretty balanced, that it will perform nicely in battle, but not be OP. Um, it's a hold down monster. If you like that kind of play, then this is definitely the tank for you. So that's kind of like my re uh, my review for both the tank and the event. I'm sorry if it still sounds weird. This will be probably the last video I do this week during my holiday. So hopefully it, it's not too bad. So that's really just it. If you're a hold down player, then you will love this tank. If you're not, then you might struggle with it a little bit. But it's, it's a nice, uh, not OP, fairly balanced tank. And that's it for this review. That's it for my event review as well. I'm hoping that you all have a fabulous day and I hope you guys enjoyed this video of course. Um, I will be back home next week so then I can make normal videos again the way that I usually do. But for now this is it and I wish you all a very good day. Bye bye!